Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a cool one. Um, so when I got into craft beer, Hardywood was one of the cool beer, or Hardywood, uh, some of these beers would be some of the cool beers that people bring in bottle shares. Um, I never had this one, but I remember like the, the gingerbread stout. Uh, um, I actually traded with somebody who gave me a, no, 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 did, he, did I trade? I forget if I trade or something, like a viewer sent me some beer, but like I, I've reviewed quite a, a few Hardywood beers. We we're talking about like a decade ago. So, um, but anyway, some of the cool beers, uh, they come in like 750 bombers, um, like the gingerbread stout and cool, like cool stuff. Uh, reviewed, I mean, I've, I've had a few. I uh, guess some good memories. Um, but let's dig into this guy. Ooh, okay. Well, now, now we're seeing where we get into. I like these stubby little bottles, by the way. They're tiny, 12 ounces. So Imperial Stout. Definitely deserves to be in this instead of like a big 750. I mean, it depends if you're sharing, but for my review purposes, it's definitely better. Um, they say savor at 50 degrees, so I'm like locking in this guy's like, all right. It's already in the beer fridge, which is already warmer than my regular fridge, but to get the 50, I think we're going to have to hold it tight. Richmond, Virginia. So I actually went to Richmond, but I didn't go to Hardywood. This is Kentucky Christmas morning. They actually had a few of these, and I picked out the one that was most cool, that seemed to me, so I like um, at, at the store. And um, look at that cool label. Again, I like this bottle, man. It looks like old school, like medicine bottle thingy. It look, looks like old soda pop or red stripe, I think, comes in this uh, bottle. And um, it's a cool little, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't buy you guys. I just sort of like this packaging. Anyway, this is Kentucky Christmas Morning. That's trademarked. Interesting. So <laughs> don't be brewing beer. It's named after that uh, with that same name. 12.2%. Uh, this is Imperial Milk Stout, aged in bourbon barrels with ginger, vanilla, honey, coffee added. And they don't even mention flavors, right? All right, interesting. They don't, they don't, I don't see the label saying quote unquote natural flavors, which is, which is a good thing. Cause, cause, cause that does mean ideally that there's, there's well, it really should under TTB rules. There's no actual like flavoring, flavoring. Like those ingredients are the ingredients in the beer and they didn't add like extracts and other weird funky stuff. Well, not, not that that's bad. You know, you can, you know, top off the flavors of a beer uh, with that. What the problem comes when you only use extract flavors, right? Audrey, can you? Uh, when you only use, um, uh, sorry, Miss Audrey is hanging out with me. Uh, I'm just trying to make the, the camera shots not getting uh, ruined by her. Anyway, um, I think some more things to say about this beer, but I like reviewing beers for you guys straight up and then uh, see what I have to say. So beer pours out. Deep brown color in the glass, obviously black, uh, medium brown head. So it's pretty dark beer. I mean, it looks pretty dark. I mean, that, that head is quite dark. So um, this is somewhat of a decent role. Like if the beer, well, not always, but if the beer is dark, the head can be, if the, the head's dark, the beer's probably pretty dark too, right? So that's a medium deep brown head, uh, brown head, um, and then dark beer. Yeah. Wonderful carb on it. Oh, yeah. Lots of coffee, ginger, big, big coffee notes. Uh, do you know what the coffee actually reminds me of? Uh, specifically, the KBS coffee. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, it just, you guys have had like coffee beers out there before. The KBS coffee just has that kind of like very specific roast flavor to it. Um, Um, uh, coffee, vanilla, the ginger comes in. Is there cinnamon in here? Mm, ginger, vanilla, honey. Okay. Cinnamon, coffee. Okay. Okay. So for me, the big one is again, coffee, um, coffee, ginger, vanilla, a little bit of that kind of like creamy, um, uh, um, not creamy, but like, um, sweet, uh, fiery bourbon character, but it's actually not that like. Dominant, whereas I feel KBS comes off a little bit more disjointed. But it does have a KBS kind of nose. So if you guys like KBS, the nose is going to be familiar, enjoyable for you guys. Nice. Milk chocolate. Um, I get like a, ooh, that's a big one. Um, I get raisinets, like a little bit of dark fruit with that milk chocolate thing going on. Nice, nice, nice. It's a fruity-ish kind of like that, 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 that. Now it's moved on a little bit past like. Uh, KBS coffee, but like, yeah, like raisin nuts, I get. <sighs> Cheers. Oh, fun. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Okay. Uh -huh. So on the palate, um, that is way more ginger forward. It's actually the purest uh, front flavor up front. Like it's, 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 a, it's a very distinct, I mean, there's distinct flavors in this beer, coffee, cinnamon, blah, blah, but the ginger is very obvious. Tons of ginger, maybe a little bit of honey. Mm. It's still too ginger for it, I find. Um, you want the stout to sort of stand up, especially as a burn barley stout. It's so big. This ginger is like, oof, boy. Like, I would have definitely blended down. Oh, my God. 
Not that it's burning on my nose, but like, how about this? If you guys like, uh, what do you call those, the ginger candies? Yeah, you get them with cocktails and stuff. Yeah, I use them cocktails. Um, those like, you know, sugar-covered dry ginger things. I mean, for me, it's a little bit like a, uh, you know what it reminds me a little? It reminds me a little bit of like a um, aperitif, like a, a digestif, like a, when you have like ginger with a, a sushi. Like, you know, you like cleanse your palate a little bit. Like for me, it's like a little palate cleanser kind of thing. Like take one of those, boom, 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 and like take one and you move on. Here you gotta sip on the beer, so like you keep taking that ginger. It's like ginger, 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 ginger. Um, I, I, I'm not that guy, <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm, I'm Chinese. Uh, I'm of Chinese descent. Definitely grew up with ginger in my life. Not a guy that would just shove pieces of ginger in my mouth. Some people can do that and just you know chonk down on it. I'm not that guy. Um, so actually, it took me quite a while. I want to I want to say it took me all the way into like my late 20s and 30s to even enjoy that ginger that you get with sushi. Just not the ginger. Not that I don't like it. Like you know, I use it in cooking and it tastes good in a lot of things. But just straight ginger to the face, I think I'm actually not in the minority. <laughs> I think a lot of people like find that off-putting. So it's very strong. Um, but I will say the palate acclimates. Um, I get a little bit of honeyed sweetness. I get a little bit. Of that, I get a good amount of that bourbon character. The coffee starts being more obvious. The cinnamon comes on in. Um, you get a really nice kind of milk chocolate thing going on. What is it? Is there chocolate in this guy? No, it's just, I think it's the coffee offering this kind of really like um, uh, dark chocolate flavor. So the roast, roast, Ro roast of chocolate, roast of coffee, blah, blah, right? And the roast of malt too. Okay. So as I wait more and more, the palate acclimates and it becomes a little bit more cohesive. Now I'm thinking I'm drinking like, um, you know, probably what they're going for, you know? Uh a ginger, you know, like, I mean, literally what the picture is, like a gingerbread cookie sitting in some coffee, um, with a little bit of bourbon added to that coffee, right? Yeah. It's a little thin for 12 too, but it's a medium plus body. Um, but it's not, it's not sharp and boozy, which is quite nice. Uh, I find that again, one of you guys have heard me say it, but one of the disjointing things about bourbon barrel age imperial stout is when it, it tastes like you just threw vo uh, bourbon into my drink don't want that it's like decently integrated in there you get the char the vanilla the coconut flavors blah blah um from the wood so quite nice what do they want to say about this uh they get the imperial milk stout months aging in kentucky bourbon barrels so they get a notes of vanilla coconut and toasted oak from that before bottling, they add ginger, vanilla, honey, cinnamon, and then cold filter it through freshly cracked local coffee beans. Blah, blah. See, cool. I, li I like a little bit of description about the beer. Honestly, it's very smooth for 12 too. Um, I easily would guess this beer is like more in the Chocoveza range, like 8, 9, maybe. I would never guess this beer is 12%. Uh, maybe 9, 5, 10 at highest. Really smooth, like um, well into grade flavors, not sharp, boozy character. I don't get, I don't really get a sense of warming down. So that's surprising for a 12-2 beer. This beer is very big. Yeah, the coffee takes a nice back seat and just like melds, it melds into the flavors of the honey, the cinnamon, uh, the bourbon, uh, the, the, the stout is nice and um i think it's a milk stout right so it is the milk stout so it's just like a smooth creamy sweet beer that held up to the barrel quite well uh, now as i drink it more the ginger is not as um disjointing and obvious and uh unpalatable as i was saying that's really good that's really good like it's not insane. It, it, it has great impression, but the execution and, and, and all those flavors just like, you know, they just, they, you know, that's that's the beauty when you have all these ingredients and you, you can marry the flavors together and they just like cohesively just like, you know, meld into one beautiful textured thing that you're, you're you know, as you drink it, you're looking for this flavor and the other flavor comes on in and it moves on to this and then it combines to, you know, make a third flavor, right? Like it reminds you of this and that, like, that's that's why we enjoy craft beer when flavors sort of like 
work and they harmonize and they also can contrast each other and then bridge and you know these all the cicerone words but they like you know do all these things that like create new flavors da, 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 like affinities of this and mm -hmm. that's really good yeah that's very tasty um boy i will say how about this it is not my definitely obviously not it's not my favorite barrel aged imperial stout of all time like you know i i i you know, I think it goes to Burm County and like maybe a few other picks, but the execution and to make a Christmas style Imperial uh, Baron Barrel Asian Imperial style, which I don't think I've like reviewed many, if any, for you guys, and I've had not had many, if any, for you guys. This is awesome. Like, I don't think you'll find a Christmas Barrel Asian Imperial style or many of them to be much better than this. So, um, specifically for this category, if you like Burm Barrel Asian Imperial styles, I'd probably give this like. A, A minus, like A, maybe just an A, but like for Christmas barrel and imperial stat, you got to try this. If, if, if the flavors make sense to you, you got to get this. If you like KBS too, and where the coffee sits, oh, actually, let me see. The K, it smells like KBS, but it's a lot less coffee forward than KBS. So yeah, for eating this as a Christmas imperial stout, like, you know, it's, it's, it's relatively unique. I don't think many breweries are doing barrel aged Christmas stouts, you know? <laughs> so uh, if you give it that, let's go to solid. 90 98 minus 98 minus that is a stupid high rating is that a stupid high rating that is a very stupid high rating sure whatever stupid high rating um again i'm cool with giving super high ratings to something that's so well executed and just that one thing I don't know how many people, would, again, you guys shout out in the comments below. How many people, what is your favorite Christmas barrel age imperial stout? Because <laughs> if, if you got one for me, you tell me. But this one for me is the best one I've had of one. The one of one that's the best. Cheers, later.